with MG. Jess, Jess on by Hey, how's everybody doing? Good. I'm Jason Barnes, uh, play drums. I'm also a student in Atlanta Student Music and Media. Um, I'm playing drums since I was about 15 years old. It's about nine years now, I'm 24. When I was 22, on January 9th, 2012, I was at work cleaning a restaurant exhaust system, and me and my assistant went on the roof and proceeded to clean the duct system and the fan system when all I remember is the feeling of fear, a loud explosion sound, and a pink flash of light. I came to in the hospital, I'm not sure how long after, um, burnt and cooked, and I thought that I was in some sort of fire or an explosion, and then everybody informed me that I was electrocuted. I didn't remember that, so of course I was shocked, literally. <laughs> uh, and what my assistant told me happened is we were on the roof, getting ready to clean a fan, and he said something spooked me, I yelled, get down, and then he remembers pink lightning coming from the power lines slash transformers, knocked us both on the ground. And when he got up, I was still on the ground, seizuring and everything. Um, so I was in the hospital for almost a month or so, and throughout various surgeries, about six or seven of breathing and trying to clean and all the dead tissue out of my arm and skin grafts and everything, they had told me that my own artery supplying blood to my hand was non-existent, so my hand wasn't getting blood. This was about almost three weeks in the hospital. So that was a six or seventh surgery. So, so at that point, I didn't really know, you know the serious of the situation, and I, I kind of looked at the doctors and asked them what the best option was, and, and the best recovery plan. I asked them if amputating my hand was the best option, the best way out of here, and they proceeded to tell me, you know, that was more than likely the best thing. Like, if I did keep my hand, it would be years of recovery. I'd be lucky if I was able to move it again. Things of that sort, so I decided to have it amputated. Um, after that, I was kind of, I guess, down and depressed about life. I wasn't really sure where I was going anymore. Uh, I was dwelling on the things that I didn't think I could do anymore, play drums, play guitar, play bass, play video games, and, you know, anything you think you couldn't do with two hands, I, I was thinking about how limited I was. So after about a week of my amputation, a week and a half, um, they released me from the hospital, I went home, and was still kind of down and depressed, didn't really know where I was going with my life. And so about three weeks or so after all that, out of boredom and everything, and, and I was just losing my mind, I, I drove my drum set out of the garage, and proceeded to tape a stick to my arm and see if it was still possible if I played drums. So played on the drums for a couple of minutes under excruciating pain and, and throughout all that it gave me the inspiration and everything like, hey, this is still possible, you know, I can still do this, I can still play drums. So that was like a huge weight lifted off my shoulders, you know. And throughout um, various physical therapies and things like that, my physical therapist, Dan Hacker, made me a makeshift um, drum prosthetic out of a drumstick. And so again, that was a boost of inspiration, another weight lifted off my shoulders, and, and I'm sitting there thinking, like, this is still possible. So after messing with that for a little while, I, about a month or so after that, I received my first molar prosthetic, and at the time, I, I, was, I wanted something that I could play drums with. So there's a company that made a prosthetic device that held a drumstick, and I received that. Was kind of more satisfied, but still not as satisfied with what I could do. So throughout about a month, two months of modifying um, things on the prosthetic, I got it to work 50 to 75 percent more efficient than how I had it. At first, it was a single uh, single hit that I could do. Now I have it modified so I can actually get a double stroke in there, so it simulates my wrist. Um, I, I played with it for about a year or so, and after all that, I, I gained the confidence. I, I heard of Man Institute of Music and Media for a while, and I decided, heck, I'm going to go try out for an audition. So I went and audition, failed the audition, because I didn't know how to read sheet music. Um, <laughs> throughout some private lessons with my drum teacher, uh, Craig Harper, he um, helped me out, uh, showed me how to do everything, and a couple weeks later I went and took another audition, passed, and just accepted the game. So that was awesome. Just, hey, I'm good enough to be here at drum school, so I can do this. Um, my first private lesson with my drum teacher, Eric Sanders, would be sat down and um, he, he was curious and intrigued. You know, he wanted to see how I played drums and what my limitations were. 
So we sat down, I played for him, and we kind of collaborated on um, where my strong points were and where my weak points were. And I, ex and I explained to him that I would be able to do more as, as um, far as control goes with the stick if I had some sort of robotic myoelectric device that had a drumstick. And so, of course, he was intrigued by this, didn't really know much about robotics or myoelectrics, went home and did his own studies, and um, made him start thinking about Gil's video of Shema. And so he came back to me, showed me this video, of course I was intrigued, and he told me that he taught private lessons to a student at Georgia Tech, and he would say something to him at the point I didn't think anything would come of it, you know. And so the student shortly thereafter gave Eric Gill's email address, and he emailed him, and, and at that point still I wasn't thinking anything was going to come from it. But, uh, his student told us that Gil was very busy and you know, the chances were really slim. Well, and within days, Gil emailed us back and said he was intrigued with, with everything and wanted to be a part of the project. So uh, at that point I was you know, mind blown. And so about a month or so after that, we all met at Georgia Tech, me, uh, two of my drum teachers, and the students, and Gil and his team, and discussed the project. Um, uh, discuss what we were going to do. They proceeded to make the arm. We came out with uh, the first uh, work prototype about a month ago. Started practicing, and that's what's led us up to today. Great. Okay.